good morning in the last classes in the earlier classes we discussed about the analysis of linear systems what are the basic systems what are the classification of systems so basically systems are do you know systems what is meant by system system is nothing but uh, it is the one which takes some signals signal suppose x of t is a signal the system will take x of t as a signal it processes something and it will give y of t as another signal so it takes signals it processes and gives some resultant signal that is called system okay systems are classified into four types linear system non linear system time variant system and time invariant systems okay so what is meant by linear system a system is said to be linear if it satisfies the scaling property and superposition theorem okay a system is said to be linear system if it satisfies the scaling property as well as superposition theorem see here here the system is there this is the system it is having the input f of t and output r of t okay here also input is also called as excitation excitation signal or input signal that is f of t and r of t is output that is also called as response that is r of t that is response so here f of t is the input signal and r of t is the output signal so if f of t is related to r of t or if r of t is related to f of t vice versa if these two are related vice versa or some constant into input signal is related to some constant into output signal or some constant into output signal related to some constant into input signal this relation is uh, said as uh, scaling property okay okay input is related to output or output is related to input so these two are related vice versa okay next coming to the superposition theorem superposition theorem is if if f1 of t is related to r1 of t and f2 of t is related to r2 of t then the sum of these two f1 of t plus f2 of t is related to r1 of t plus r2 of t then this property is called the superposition property or superposition theorem on the whole by combining these two properties scaling property and uh, uh, superposition theorem it gives linearity property and uh, here we remember in linear systems the output uh, varies linearly according to the input output varies linearly according to the input okay so on the whole the linearity property is defined as some alpha some constant into f1 of t plus some constant into f2 of t that is alpha into f1 of t plus beta into f2 of t is related to alpha into r1 of t plus beta into r2 of t so finally a linear system is uh, the system which satisfies the scaling and superposition theorem and its output changes linearly with the change in input okay so this is called um, the linear system then coming to the time invariant system what is invariant and variant so here the system whose parameters are uh, uh, whose parameters do not change with respect to time okay the system whose parameters do not change with respect to time is called time invariant system okay see if f of t is the input signal r of t is the output signal f of t is related to r of t or r of t is related to f of t then f of t minus tau is related to r of t minus tau okay the system which is linear and time invariant is called as linear time invariant system okay here we have two properties linearity property as well as invariant property so if the system is combinedly have these properties then it is called linear time invariant system okay the system which is linear and time invariant okay that is called linear time invariant system what is meant by non non linear system non linear system would does not satisfy the scaling and superposition theorems then that is called non linear system okay then uh, time invariant time variant system then the properties of linear time invariant systems we have some four properties of linear time invariant system what are those four properties 
that is a cumulative property, distributive property, associative property, and static and dynamic property. Cumulative property, distributive property, associative property, final one is static and dynamic property. How the cumulative property is defined? See, if uh, this is the system, this box is nothing but the system having the impulse response H of T, okay? Is having the input signal F of T and the output signal R of T. Output, C is also, output signal is also called as response, okay? So this response, response of this system is defined as the input F of T convolved with the impulse response that is f of t star h of t f of t convolution with h of t or we can write this as h of t convolved with f of t h of t convolved with f of t this is called cumulative property next one is distributive property here we are distributing the response is expressed like this see here the system having the impulse responses uh, h1 of t and h2 of t these two are added here okay the system is having the input signal f of, f of t and the output signal r of t okay f of t is the input signal and r of t is the output signal right so if r1 of t is defined as f1 of t star h of h1 of t r1 of t is nothing but the response of the first system so so r1 of t is equal to f1 of t that is input signal converted with the, the impulse response similarly r2 of t is equal to f2 of t converted with the h2 of t then r1 of t plus r2 of t is equal to f1 of t convolution convolution with h1 of t plus f2 of t convolution with h2 of t this uh, f of t this f1 of t f2 of t can be treated as f of t that is f of t make it as common so f of t convolution with uh, h1 of t plus h2 of t okay so here it is a distributed distributed so this is called distributive property next one is associative property so next one is associative property so r1 of t is expressed as f of t converse convolution with uh, h1 of t convolved with h2 of t whole these two these two are considered as a, a square brackets similarly this r2 of t can be expressed as f of t convolved with h1 of t whole whole this whole function convolved with uh, h2 of t similarly r3 of t can be expressed as uh, f of t convolved with h2 of t whole converted with uh, h1 of t okay this is called uh, associative property next one is um, static and dynamic property what we already know about the static systems and dynamic systems static systems are generally memoryless systems dynamic systems are having some memory memoryless system means uh, the system doesn't have any any storage storage ability okay so static systems are memoryless systems that is uh, the output depends only on the present input present state of the input suppose in these systems the impulse response h of t is zero for t is less than or equal to zero for t is less than or equal to zero okay so coming to the dynamic systems see static systems means memoryless systems so the output of the system depends on the present state of the input so it will take the present state of the input okay right coming to the dynamic system these are memory these are having some memory so storage device it can it consisting of some storage device so dynamic system is one whose output depends on the present and past inputs okay the output depends on present and past inputs right next coming to the transfer function of the lta system what is meant by lta system linear time invariant system this is also called as a system function system function a system is there what is its function a system in general we can take we can say that a system is having one input and output how to express the system function from the given system system function is nothing but output by input suppose x of t is the input y of t is the output then 
uh, the ratio of output signal to the input signal is nothing but system function right or it is also called as transfer function okay right it is y of t by x of t y of t is output signal x of t is input signal right so here that is in general we can say that the system function is expressed mathematically like that our transfer function is expressed mathematically like that in general but here we are taking the an exponential signal as the input signal that is x of t equal to e power j omega t that is exponential signal exponential signal as the input signal okay right then y of t becomes y of t equal to the input signal x of t convolved with the impulse response h of t right where x of t is uh, the uh, x of t is an exponential signal that is e power j omega t right and h of t is impulse response then y of t can be expressed as uh, so here we are taking the convolution formula convolution formula is integral minus infinity to infinity h of t into x of t minus to d tau right or we can write this as uh, uh, integral minus infinity to infinity x of uh, h of t into e power j omega t is replaced by t minus tau okay j, o, j omega t minus tau okay t minus tau right right d tau at uh, that equal to integral minus infinity to infinity h of t into this is in the form of e power a plus b so e power a plus b is e power a into e power b that is e power j omega t into e power minus j omega tau d tau so extract e power j omega t outside so e power j omega t into integral minus infinity to infinity h of t into e power minus j omega tau d tau right so it is equal to e power j omega t into t into integral minus infinity infinity x of t into e power minus j omega t dt or integral that is nothing but x of omega but it is h of t into e power j omega tau d tau that is a h of omega so y of t becomes um, e power j omega t into h of omega e power j omega t is nothing but x of t so that is a y of t equal to x of t into h of omega let it be considered as a equation number one where h of omega is integral minus infinity to infinity h of t into e power minus j omega tau d tau what is h of omega h of omega is nothing but a fourier transform of h of t what is h of t from from how to how to extract h of t from h of omega by taking inverse fourier transform of h of omega okay so h of t can be ex, uh, extracted as uh, 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity h of omega into e power j omega tau d tau this is the inverse fourier transform of h of omega this is the fourier transform of h of t right thus the above equation states that the response of a lta system to complex exponential function of frequency omega is same as the input multiplied by constant called transfer function here transfer function is h of omega h of omega equal y of t by x of t transfer function h of omega right so the transfer function h of omega is given by h of omega equal to y of t by x of t at x of t equal to e power j omega t right so if we express the input in terms of its fourier transform what is input here e power j omega t okay so in terms of fourier transform then x of t is equal to x how to find x of t so that by taking inverse Fourier transform of x of omega so that is 1 by 2 pi into integral minus infinity infinity x of omega into e power plus j omega t d omega right so substitute this expression or the expression of x of t substitute this expression in equation number one what is equation number one y of t equal to x of t into h of omega so x of t value is one by two point integral minus infinity to infinity x of omega into e power j omega t d omega right substitute this entire value in equation number one so that y of t becomes one by two pi integral minus infinity to infinity x of omega into h of omega into e power j omega t d omega right 
So 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity x of omega into h of omega whole into e power j omega t d omega. But uh, x of product of x of omega and h of omega will be considered as y of omega where y of omega is x of omega into h of omega or h of omega is y of omega by x of omega okay this is represented in terms of time domain this is represented in terms of frequency domain okay this is the transfer function of system or this is also called as a system function this is transfer function of lta system or system function okay next next we will go for the impulse response impulse response Okay, let us consider the system having the input signal x of n and uh, the output signal y of n. Okay, so how to get this uh, y of n? y of n equal to transformation of the input signal. y of n is nothing but the output signal. So output signal is nothing but the transformation of the y of x of n, transformation of the input signal. Let us consider the input signal is, uh, input signal is the unit impulse function unit impulse function unit impulse function is nothing but uh, at n here at n equal to 0 or at t equal to 0 it exists its value is 1 impulse function is defined as delta n or delta t equal to 1 at uh, if it is delta t then equal then it is t equal to 0 delta t equal to 1 at t equal to 0 or delta n equal to 1 at n equal to 0 right so if the input to the LTA system is unit impulse, then X of n is delta of n. Then Y of n is nothing but transformation of X of n, that is transformation of delta of n. So the response Y of n is the impulse response. Okay, we know that uh, the input signal X of n can be represented in terms of weighted impulses. That is Y of n equal to transformation of um, X of n. Okay. So y of n can be represented as transformation of x of n. x of n is nothing but uh, x of n is inverse Fourier transform of x of k. Okay, x of n is uh, uh, represented like this. So sigma k equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k into delta of n minus k. Okay, the, this can be rearranged like this. Sigma k equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k into transformation of delta of n minus k. Or it is x of k into transformation of delta of n minus k can be written as h of n comma k. For time invariant systems, h of n comma k is equal to h of n minus k. So replace h of n comma k by h of n minus k. Okay. So sigma k equal to minus infinity infinity x of k into h of n minus k is nothing but the convolution of uh, x of n and h of n x of n converted with h of n so y of n becomes x of n converted with h of n okay let us do some problems on this uh, lta systems okay let us do some problems on lta systems okay here the problem is given like this let the system function of a lta system be 1 by j omega plus 2 what is the output of the system for an input 0.8 whole power t into u of t 0.8 whole power t into u of t so here the system function system function or a transfer function both are same so how it is represented the system function and transfer function that is represented by h of omega h of omega is given as 1 by j omega plus 2 right then what is the output of the system for an input here the input x of t is given as 0.8 whole power t into u of t and the output what is output here y of t we have to find out the y of t but h of omega is given okay h of omega is given from that h of omega we can find out h of t h of t is nothing but inverse Fourier transform of h of omega by writing the inverse Fourier transform of h of omega we will get h of t h x of t is already there y of t is nothing but uh, x of t convolved with h of t x of t convolved with uh, h of t is nothing but uh, y of t right so according to convolution theorem y of t equal to x of t converted with 
h of t this is h of t actually so we can write the formula as y of t equal to integral minus infinity infinity h of tau into x of t minus tau d tau this is the convolution theorem formula okay so impulse response of lta system is uh, h of omega is given as 1 by j omega plus 2 but h of t is nothing but inverse fourier transform of h of omega we know that uh, inverse fourier transform of 1 by a plus j omega is um, e power minus at into u of t e power minus at into u of t it is also uh, looking like the same as uh, 1 by a plus j omega 1 by 2 plus j omega so e power minus 2t into u of t h of t is e power minus 2t into u of t right so from this equation y of t equal to x of t converted with h of t or it is h of tau into x of t minus tau d tau right so this is h of tau is e power minus 2 tau into u tau into uh, x of tau is 0.8 whole power tau into d tau but here u of t is not written why because uh, u of t is nothing but unit step function it is defined as uh, u of t equal to 1 for t is greater than or equal to 0 that's why here the limits are limits may be changed limits are from 0 to infinity only why because u of t exists from 0 to infinity only in the next step uh, uh, we show like this so see here y of t equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus 2 tau into 0 0.8 whole power t into 0 0.8 whole power minus tau d tau there is no u of t y because its value is 1 only okay then extract 0 0.8 whole power t outside integral 0 to infinity e power minus 2 tau into 0 0.8 whole power minus tau d tau take minus tau as common so e power 2 into 0.8 whole power minus tau d tau let us consider 0.8 into e power tau whole power minus 1 as a then it will become a tau d tau okay 0.8 whole power d with the integral 0 to infinity a tau d tau so it is a integral e power ax dx it is in the form of integral e power e uh, integral a power x dx that is a power x by log a okay a power x by log a so it is 0.8 whole power t into a power tau by log a with limits 0 infinity right so what is a here 0.8 into e power 2 whole power minus 1 so substitute the value of a at here 0.8 into e power 2 whole power minus 1 into tau that is a minus tau with limits 0 infinity so by substituting all these values we will get the y of t value is 0.8 whole power t by log 0.8 into e power 2 this will become 0.8 whole power t by log 0.8 plus 2 log e to the base e log e to the base e value is 1 so it is log 0.8 plus 2 okay so then uh, y of t becomes 0.8 whole power t into log 0.8 plus 2 okay that is the output response y of t with given h of t and x of t right next problem next the problem is given as a show that a system with the excitation x of t what is excitation excitation means input signal okay excitation x of t and response y of t described by the response y of t is equal to x of t minus 5 plus x of 3 minus t is linear or non-causal and non-invertible we have to show the system uh, y of t as a linear non-causal and non-invertible okay so given the response is like this given the response of the system y of t is x of t minus 5 plus uh, x of 3 minus t right so linearity first of all we have to check the linearity linear how to check the linearity property it obeys the scaling property as well as superposition theorem if it satisfies the scaling property as well as a superposition theorem then we can say that uh, the system is linear okay let two inputs x1 of t and x2 of t are applied and their respective outputs y1 of t and y2 of t are given by right y1 of t becomes x1 of t minus 5 plus uh, x1 of 3 minus t similarly y2 of t 
is equal to uh, x2 of t minus y plus x2 of 3 minus t, right? Then y1 of t plus uh, y2 by adding these two, y1 of t plus uh, y2 of t is equal to x1 of t minus y plus x1 of 3 minus t plus x2 of t minus y plus x2 of 3 minus t. Let it consider and let it be considered as a equation number one, right? When an input x1 of t plus x2 of t is applied, then output becomes y1 of t plus y2 of t. That whole will be considered as a y3 of t, right? So x1 of t plus x2 of t whole will be applied to this input. Then we will get y1 of t plus y2 of t. By adding these two, we will get uh, x1 of t minus y plus uh, x2 of t minus y plus uh, x1 of 3 minus t plus x2 of 3 minus t. Or it is uh, uh, writing only x1 terms at the one side. So x1 of t minus y plus x1 of 3 minus t plus x2 of t minus y plus x2 of 3 minus t. That is uh, considered as equation number 2. Okay, equation number 2. Then from equations 1 and 2, we have y1 of t plus y2 of t whole will be considered as y3 of t. Thus, the system is satisfying the so proportion theorem. Hence, the system is a linear scaling property. It also satisfies the scaling property here. Right? So, it satisfies both scaling as well as so proportion theorems. Then it will become linear system then coming to the causality system causality so consider the given system y of t is equal to x of t minus y plus x of 3 minus t right so put t equal to 0 in the above expression so y of 0 becomes um, x of 0 minus y that is x of minus y plus uh, x of 3 minus t that is x of 3 if put to 1 1 in the above expression then t equal to 1 y of 1 equal to x of 1 minus 5 that is minus 4 plus x of 3 minus 1 x of 2 similarly for 2 y of 2 equal to x of 2 minus 5 minus 3 x of 3 minus 2 1 see see here x of 3 indicates that uh, the output um, see this x of 3 indicates that the output at t equal to 0 is dependent on the input value at uh, t equal to 3 and t equal to minus 5, right? Hence, the system depends on past and future values of inputs, okay? In other cases, the output of the system is depending on the past and future values of the input. Hence, the given system is non-causal system, okay? Non-causal system. Hence, the given system is non-causal system. So, it is the second condition. And third condition is invertibility. Invertibility property. Consider the given system y of t equal to x of t minus y plus uh, x of 3 minus t. For, for t equal to 0, as we already uh, substituted, that is y of 0 is equal to x of minus y plus x of 3, right? In the above instant, output at y, y, y equal to 0 is obtained by adding the inputs at um, minus 4 and 2, right? x of uh, 0 minus 5 x of 3 minus 0 okay that is x the inputs x at minus 4 and x at minus x at plus 2 several inputs signals are responsible for same output okay here the several input signals are responsible what are the several input signals x of uh, minus 4 x of uh, minus 5 that is at minus 4 value x of 3 at uh, minus 2 value so these several input signals are responsible for same output that is y of zero thus the system is uh, non-invertible so here the given system is a uh, causal linear system non-causal system and non-invertible system okay next uh, the given problem is a system has an impulse response h of t is equal to 4 into e power minus 40 into u of t. This is the given system of the impulse response. Impulse response is given. Find the graph and response of the system to x of t. Here x of t, that is input signal, is given as a rectangular function of 2 of t minus 1 by 4. Rectangular function of 2 of t minus 1 by 4. Okay? Right. So, 
we have to find out the response that is y of t we have to find out so the impulse response of a system is h of t equal to 4 into e power minus 14 to u of t which is shown like this this is exponentially decaying function its amplitude is 4 and this is exponentially decaying its function is e power minus 40 this is the exponentially decaying function 4 into e power minus 40 the input signal x of t is given as a rectangular function of 2t minus 2 by 4 that is a rectangular function of 2t minus 1 by 2 rectangular function of 2t minus 1 by 2 right so which is shown like this here the rectangular function is shown like this if t is 0 then it is rectangular of 0.5 rectangular of 0.5 if t equal to 1 it is 2 minus 1 by 2 that is 4 minus 1 by 2 3 by 2 it is 1.5 okay rectangular function of 1.5 if t is 2 4 minus uh, 1 by 2 that is uh, 3.5 okay t is 1 2 minus 0.5 that is 1.5 okay okay so it is shown like this it is already shown like this so rectangular function is a way it is exists between minus 0.25 to minus 0.75 its amplitude is one okay then the response of the system can be obtained as y of t equal to x of t converted with h of t that is a y of t is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity integral minus infinity to infinity h of k into x of t minus k dk this is the convolution formula mathematical formula of the convolution right okay then h of k and x of k signals are shown in below figures see this is h of k signal and x of k is this one figure 3 and figure 4 the time Reversal form of x of k is nothing but uh, x of minus k. That is nothing but mirror image of x of k is represented as this mirror image, mirror image of this one. So this will be represented in this side. Okay, so this is um, this exists between 0.25 and 0.75. This is the mirror image of the above one, right? Then for t is less than zero, the signal x of t minus k can be represented as shown in figure 6 okay x of t minus k x of t minus k time will be shifted towards right side by k units so it will be represented as figure 6 as x of t minus k as uh, this is 0.25 plus t this is 0.75 plus t amplitude will not change then k equal to 0 to 0.75 from here to here 0.75 plus t is the time period over which both um, x of t minus k and h of k are present h of k h of k is this one x of t minus k t minus k with uh, k equal to 0 to 0.75 plus t okay then y of t becomes for t equal to less than 0 it is from 0 to 0.75 plus t 1.4 into e power minus 4k dk 1.4 into e power minus 4k dk 1.4 is uh, nothing but the h of k value okay h of k value h of k is 4 into e power minus 40 right or 4 into e power minus 4k okay see see here so 1.4 into e power minus 4k into dk so it is e power minus 4k with the limits uh, um, 0 to 0.75 plus k plus t uh, this is uh, 4 by minus 4 that is minus 1 into e power minus, by substituting this one we will get 1 minus e power minus 3 into e power minus 40 or it is equal to 1 minus 0.0498 into e power minus 40 let it be considered as equation number 1 so we derived uh, we analyze this one for t is less than 0 
now we are analyzing this for t is greater than 0 okay if the signal x of t minus k can be represented as shown in figure this is x of t minus k right it will be shifted towards right side by k units so k is uh, varying from t plus 0.25 to t plus 0.75 is the time period over which both x of t minus k and h of k are present hence uh, it is uh, integral t plus 0.75 to t plus uh, t, uh, t plus 0.25 to t plus 0.75 into 1 into 4 into e4 minus 4k dk here the amplitude is 1 right 1 okay it is uh, we, we can write this uh, uh, 4 extract this 4 outside so 4 by minus 4 into e power minus 4k into minus 4k with limits of t plus 0.25 to t plus 0.75 okay so by simply substituting y of t becomes a 0.3118 in t power minus 4t for t is greater than 0 that is equation number 2 y of t for t is less than 0 is 1 minus 0.0498 into e power minus 4t right so for t equal to 0 x of t minus k is equal to x of minus k as shown in figure 5 here is figure 5 figure 5 is uh, figure 5 is this one okay so okay for t equal to 0 case uh, we will analyze in the next class so up to this i will uh, conclude for i will conclude the today's session okay so okay remaining uh, this problem we will explain in the next class. Okay, thank you.